Hey, how's everybody doing today? Pretty good. Let me get a show of hands. Who is happy to be here? We're missing a couple of hands. Let me get a show of hands. Who's happy to be here? All right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So, how many of you all had trouble finding a place today? I think we're missing a couple more hands. I actually moved the block a couple times, uh, about five or six, till I actually found it. So, uh, my name is Nick Black owner of America's IT Doctors. We're an IT management company. And that's just a little spiel about me real quick. Essentially, I don't know if you can tell, I'm really nervous when it comes to public speaking. So a buddy of mine actually told me the other day, he said, hey man, you want to know a tip for public speaking? And I said, sure, what should I do? He said, just imagine everybody in their underwear. So as I'm up here now, I'm going to ask all the gentlemen to move to the back, ladies to come over. <laughs> but no, really. Um, how many of you all actually have had some sort of age discrimination incident in your life or day to day? I'm seeing some hands. Let me get some more hands. Okay. Um, if you don't mind me calling Adele, rolling in the beat. That's how I remember her name. She's awesome from uh, Georgia Tech. So give me, what was your experience with age discrimination? That's good. That's very good. I saw another hand, I believe, a young lady over here. Um, mine was a little more specific. You know how doctors have criteria for when they want to do certain tests. And I had a family history, or at least a family history of cancer. And because I had a surgery, I wanted to have a baseline so that they could have their test. But the doctor tried to tell me no, because I was not old enough to have a mammogram. And I basically said, well, you're going to get it. Okay. <laughs> okay, wow. That's, 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 a, that's a good example there. Um, anyone else? I think I may have seen a hand or two over here. Oh. She's like, don't call me, please. <laughs> um, I think maybe something similar. Uh, when I was younger and in a different position, I, I felt uh, whether or not it was valid uh, that yeah, people that were significantly older than me uh, had a different impression of my capabilities. And I would want to show up uh, much stronger and knowing more to prove that I'm you know, able to be the same. Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, the feeling is definitely mutual there. I can't say the same for a mammogram. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they're there, that, that right there. But in any event, uh, like you're saying, the, the feeling of needing to do more, be better, and do twice as much because you want to show them that you're capable. And even, uh, like Adele said, just people not taking you seriously. Per se. So essentially, my day to day life, I do a lot of chamber of commerce meetings, a lot of networking, and a lot of the people I run into are usually ages 45 and up. Most of them are CEOs, a couple marketing representatives. Most of them are usually older, though. And one common trend that I found is that at first, they may not be willing to give you that shot initially. And as you talk to them some more, they can see that you're right or wherever the case is, and then they open up to you a little bit. And sometimes that age, that age discrimination barrier, it's there, there's no getting past it. But it's fine, move around it, essentially. So one thing that I've noticed is that I would tell myself that, oh, I'm not old enough, or they are looking at me this way because once again, the age to age difference. But it's not always the case. A mentor of mine, I actually met him, he was in North Carolina, I drove about four hours in a cast so I can learn from this guy. And I, I told him, I said, well, people aren't taking me serious because I'm not old enough. He told me, he said, don't even think about it. It's not that, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that serious, essentially. What he was saying was that, look at it as a plus. And so the, the age barrier, and look at it as a plus. So he said, when people look at you, they're going to say, wow, that's a young guy, and he grew up in IT, and he knows what he's doing, because this is, that's all he knew growing up. And so I thought, wow, that's really good. That is really good, actually. 
And so, day to day, I'm going in, Chamber of Commerce, and hey, how's it going? My name is Nick, I do IT, this is what my company does. And actually, the moment I had that confidence and I didn't see everybody as being, oh, older and younger type of deal, I broke down so many barriers. And what I found was that these discrimination was there, but it was more so in here. And one thing I will say is that if you let it get to you, it will. But if you look past it and you can see past it, the stars, you, you can shoot for the stars, essentially. So I would definitely say that it's not who you are that holds you back, it's who you think you are not. If you wanted to play basketball as a kid, oh, I'm not tall enough. Or if you wanted to be a, I don't know, hockey player. Well, I'm black and I don't really see many black hockey players. Take all of that out of your head. And the first thing I took out of my head was that I'm not old enough. And the moment I got over that, I've been excelling ever since. So essentially, I would say age discrimination is clearly there, but don't let it get to you. Because when you tell you you are not, when you tell yourself you're not something, that's the moment it holds you back. So tell yourself that I am old enough, I am going to do this, I am tall enough to play basketball if you're only five feet tall. Shoot, you can shoot the ball, I don't know, you can figure it out one way or another. So essentially, that is my talk on age discrimination in the uh, business world, I guess you could say. So, any questions, comments? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay, here we go, this lady right here. Um, so I'm almost 30, and I'm only just now considering getting into tech type stuff, thinking about learning how to code. Um, what about, like, I think when you grow up in tech, as a lot of people have now, mm -hmm. uh, people do expect for that knowledge to be there. I don't have that. I'm going to be an older person learning how to code and getting into tech. Like, what? What kind of advice do you have for somebody who maybe didn't grow up with tech stuff? Really true. I would say do the reverse either. Find, uh, I think this gentleman over here was talking about the coding and whatnot, and my thing of that as well. Team up with the younger generations, the ones that grew in it, and then just make it happen. I would say that would be the best way to break through it, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm gonna pick on my guy. I know, I know, I gotta, I gotta pick on you. Okay. <laughs> Question. I'm trying to come up with one real quick. I'm sorry, man. It's cool. <laughs> so essentially, if they're, oh, Adele? Can you give any uh, very concrete examples? Uh, what you've done differently with that confidence that I'm open That's How has your approach been different? I would say I've been more so uh, a little bit older, I guess you'd say. I'm not so timid and shy when approaching people a lot older than me. Instead, I'll just come at them and say, hey, how's it going, Bill, or whatever the person's name is. I'll say, hey, how's it going, my name's Nick. I take the SH out of IT. What can I do to make it work for you? And they're like, Holy cow, you know, they're thinking, this kid has a potty mouth or he's bronzy as ever. So let me talk to this guy. Let me get to know more about him. So it's, I guess, that boldness and confidence out of it is what really, uh, I think, propelled me forward, I would say. Mike? Question now. Um, how do you think the age difference kind of affected your brand? Because if I'm not mistaken, you started a company. Young guy coming in with a company, and you know that's not something that people see. Well. So I guess, how did it influence your brand? I would say essentially, or the uh, the brand that the company essentially has, at least when they see my face, people think, oh, that's Nick, the young IT guy. And so that's actually the basis of my talk. Essentially, I had a lady. She approached me. She said, "How old are you?" And I said. How do I look? She said, you can't be any older than my son. He's 13, so I'm going to 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I would say that it, it also helped the brand. I, I looked at it as such a negative that I didn't realize it was a positive. So now people associate with me as being that 
outspoken, outspoken, friendly IT guy that's a young guy, the youngest guy most of the times in the room. So they just say, hey, do you need, you need IT work? Talk to Nick. He has a company. They do all that stuff. Who's Nick? Oh, he's the youngest guy in the room. And it's just word as well. Yeah. Oh, I see a hand in the back. Yeah, to the comment earlier about starting later in life with technology, um, I'm curious, you, you hire, you're a hiring manager now, you, I assume. Do you feel like you, you, your experience has made you more open to, or more aware of, you know, any prejudices you might have on the flip side of, you know, people say, you know, is somebody too old to do a job? Uh, that's good. That's, that's actually really good. Um, I wouldn't say that I necessarily have any prejudices towards somebody that's older. Uh, I prefer just just because uh, network engineers being a little older, simply because networking hasn't really changed much over these past couple of years. Protocols are most of the same as they've been for a while now. Um, I wouldn't say I, I have any reverse prejudices or any that I've seen. Um, hiring wise, though, I, I do know other IT companies, they will go for uh, older, older people in the field for, for positions simply because they feel like there's more experience there. But myself, I don't even look at it. I look at what the person knows, how well they can articulate about it, and then I go from there. I've actually, just as a comment, I've experienced a lot of the reverse of that. In, I'm in software engineering, I'm in my late 30s, and I see a lot of people as they go into their 40s and later, they have a lot more trouble getting hired because people feel they can't continue to learn at the pace because I will say I have I have heard that as well. I can't say that I've seen it directly. Um, another thing that I normally see, at least with IT, is by the time an IT person makes it to about 50, 55, either they go into teaching or they just go into starting their own company simply because they reach the pay grade point where some companies will just say, hey, I can be a younger guy at half the cost. Type of thing. So, I will say that is that's pretty valid. Any other questions, comments? Comments? I mean, uh, compliments? I say compliments. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's nothing else, then I will say it was great talking to you all. My name is Nick Black with America's IT Doctors. You take an SH out of IT and it worked for you. And don't let age hold you back. <laughs>